What's up, Keys Mods fan? David Fine here. Um, I got another package that was delivered to me um, from my friend Ricky, who lives in the state of Mississippi. And he says that he caught some really rare and interesting Katakala mods or underwing mods. And so he wanted to send me some. It's a pretty big box for a couple mods. I don't know how he packaged it, but what I want to do, guys, I want to unbox this package okay I'm gonna unbox this and we're gonna see together what Ricky sent me from the great state of uh, Mississippi um, there's I've never been collecting in the state of Mississippi so uh, there there's plenty there that I've never seen and uh, I'm looking forward to getting into this box right now and see what he sent me guys let's dig in all right folks it's time to dig in and uh, I'm cutting the box open here and I'm trying also to not have his address be revealed that's not cool but he had his address in like eight different places all right guys here we go um, let's see we've got some of this stuff oh, I've got pinning box all right all right, all right, all right. Pinning box number one. And a whole lot of packaging paper. And so guys, what I'm probably gonna do, I might save this box and all this packaging paper because there's a few people that I wanna send some stuff to. And I'm probably just gonna save this. It. This is a a pinning box style that is very common. It's used in the, from the state of, uh, Florida State Collection of Arthropods. They, they give these out to research associates. And it looks like it fits perfectly inside of this box. So I'm gonna keep this box and use it to ship something to somebody else. So, uh, but now guys, we're gonna dig into this pinning box. Oh, it looks like I got a letter. Huh, $20 bill. Let's see. All right, so we have five Katakala Meristica, a pair of Katakala Robinsoni, with, with which it was confused for a long time. But I put in a Katakala Eulalume, a Katakala vidua and an undescribed species of Katakala, which is currently called white fringed residua by the smart Katakala guy, by the smart Katakala guys. I used to think it was Katakala obscura, but based on DNA by those guys, it doesn't, it's not, it is closest to residua, which does not have white hind wing fringe. Again, sorry it took you so long. Um, if you don't mind, send the box back. I would appreciate it. Enclose 20 bucks that would take to ship. All right, well, that works. So I'll keep this stuff. Oh, he gave me a diagram too, look at that. I guess I have to make labels. Okay, perfect. We can do that. Let's, we'll keep our little template over here. Oh, okay. Okay, guys, now this is actually really interesting because these are all black underwing moths. And as you read in his description, th there's been DNA work that's been done on all of these. And these are like four different species. So inclu including an undescribed, which I believe is down here. And so let's see if we can get in on this. So we've got a Katakala Meristica. Uh, these are the top two on the left, Meristica. We've got Katakala Eula, Eula Lume. Eula Lume? Yeah, I think so. Right there. We've got Katakala Vidua. All right, we've got 
Marista Cup here again. Okay, so these top four are Marista Cup. They must be male and female. And uh, I believe females have this dark banding. Males do not. Okay. And then we have here, he's calling this Robinson Eye. And then Robinson Eye form Missouriensis. Wow. Okay, yeah, they look different. So these are the same species, but very different looking. And then this, he's calling this an undescribed species. So I, I'm, I'm thrilled, guys, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. To be honest with you guys, uh, Catocala moths in South Florida are not something that we have a lot of, so I don't really have a whole lot of experience with them. And I, I haven't been around the country looking for them. So it's kind of hard to really become an expert on something that you just don't deal a whole lot with. So when you got guys like Ricky who, who send us, send me stuff and it's, they all have their identif or the, uh, they all have their labels on them already the location labels. I might have to put identification labels on them, but it's really cool to get these things and they're all beautiful, perfect specimens. And I'm going to happily put them in my collection and uh, and, and be very happy about it. So uh, Ricky, thanks so much for being a good sport. They all arrived perfectly. I just want to show you how he pinned them. Uh, this These pinning bottoms, this is a double foam pinning bottom. So he's got two, two layers of, um, of foam on here and he has the second layer glued in as well. And then the pins have two layers of foam to go down into that holds them in place. Sorry, there's a lot of loud traffic outside here. But then each of the specimens have a, a pin holding down the abdomen that keeps the abdomen from spinning because this, this pin is the only thing holding the moth on the pinning bottom. And, you know, it, it will spin on that pin. The, the, the weight of the moth will turn it around. So that's why we keep, put a pin on each side of the abdomen to keep them from spinning. Uh, and he did a great job. They arrived perfectly. Ricky, thanks so much. Uh, guys, if you like underwing moths, give me a thumbs up. Um, you know, Ricky's a good dude. He's not expecting anything in return. He's just wanted to bless me with some cool, cool underwing moths from the state of Mississippi. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Uh, we are having a blast in Keys Moths and just learning about all the butterflies and moths of South Florida, but also, I would say, and beyond. And so we're, today we're talking about black underwing moths of Mississippi. Guys, take care. See you out in the field sometime. Bye now.